Here we're going to go through the Arrive Can app. And once again, we are assuming that you've downloaded the app onto your phone and you've registered. So let's start right from the beginning here by clicking on the Arrive Can app icon. Just a quick splash screen saying we're going to start. And we need to read through this privacy notice. You need to go all the way down to the bottom. Feel free to read all of it. I would suggest that you do and click next. And this is where you sign into your Arrive Can. Now I've already signed in to it a couple of times. I've practiced a number of times. So my phone recognizes that uh, login information. Yours may not, you may need to register, but for me, I've already registered, so it's easy to log on. The first thing that we see here, it asks us to get started on our Arrive Cap form. Press Start and asks, of course, how you're going to be entering into Canada. You have a choice by either entering by air, by land, or by marine. I think most people will be either arriving by air or by land. For the purpose of this exercise, we're going to be clicking on Arrive or Entry by Air. And this is where we put in our flight details. The first uh, entry is our country of origin. Again, this is the, it says here in the explanation that this is the last country you stayed in or visited prior to your flight to Canada. So for this exercise, we're going to say that perhaps I'm coming from the United States. So I need to type in United States. And then there uh, appears there, United States of America. Uh, and which airport I'm going to be arriving in. Now, this is the airport that you're going to be going through customs in. So most likely it will be your first port of entry. I'm going to say Vancouver in this case. So Vancouver International Airport appears. Click on that. The airline, let's say Air Canada. And the flight number, let's go with a 777, just because. And the arrival date. Now you'll notice here that you are not able to enter any dates further than three days from now. So because I'm recording this on the 1st of August, the 4th of August is the earliest that I'd be able to complete this form. So let's put in the 4th, just, just to show you if I try to click on any other date, it doesn't work. So let's click on the 4th of August and it allows me to enter, you know, pick a time, first the hour and then the minutes. Let's say a cool 3.45. Done. Everything looks good. I can choose to save or to close or I can continue to the next screen which is also saving it so I'll save it or sorry go to the next screen so it asks is your travel related to any of the following travel purposes so you want to go through these four items for again for the purpose of this exercise we're going to say no we're going to make up the scenario let's say that we're going to visit our family back in Canada so we're going to say no none of those is the reason why I'm coming to Canada and then you choose what your purpose is for travel. Is it to return to Canada? Is it for family reunion? Is it because you're a foreign worker? Is it to study? Or are you crossing on compassionate grounds? And there is an explanation for each of these items. So if you think you fall into one of these categories, please click on it and read what it says, or it could be none of the above. I'm going to say, as per my scenario, that this is a family reunion. I'm going to visit friends or sorry I'm going to visit family so we have an option here to add another traveler so if you are traveling with more 
than one individual. So let's say your spouse um, or child, or it could be somebody else in your family and you're traveling with them, then you can add them here. I'm going to be traveling alone, so I'm going to just continue on. And this is where enter in our phone number. Uh, I'm not going to put in a secondary phone and it asks what my choice of official language is. I'm going to say, of course, English and go forward. Now we get into proof of vaccination questions. Uh, and it does state here that if you have not been vaccinated, it will not affect your admissibility at this point. Now, it may in the future. Things will change on August 7th, but at this point, it does not uh, matter. So uh, it's asking if I've received a COVID-19 vaccine, and I'm going to say, yes, I have. Which COVID-19 vaccine did I receive on your first dose? And I'm going to say Pfizer. And in which country did you receive the first dose? I'm going to say again, because in my scenario coming from the United States, I'm going to say that I received it in the United States of America. And the date, I'm just going to pick a kind of a random date here and say June 1st. And then it asks if I've received a second dose. And I have, so I'm going to say, yes, I have. And then it, you continue on, you know, which vaccine did you receive? Pfizer. In which country did you receive the second dose? I'm going to say again, United States of America and what date? Uh, now I'm going to say it was August 7th, which is not correct, but that's about right. Which would mean I'm which would mean I'm fully immunized. And then you need to upload or take a photo of your proof of vaccination. So because I was actually immunized in BC, I've got my immunization record card and that's what I'm going to take a photo of here. I see that there's two photo sections, one for your first dose, one for your second. In my case, the proof of vaccination is, happens to be both doses on the same card. So I'll take the card, the photo twice. Uh, it asks you to allow access to your phone, which I will allow. And photo, that one's okay. And add my second photo. And okay. All right, so now I've uploaded my proof of vaccination. Go to the next page and this is where it goes through the list of mandatory travel requirements once again this will change in the future we know that you know on august 7th things will change a little bit but i would urge you to read this and once you've read it you acknowledge it and there's you continue on with the second page again make sure you read this to make sure that you are admissible and that you've done everything that you need to do. Acknowledge. And now, of course, to cross the border and enter into Canada, you still need to have taken a test. So it asks you, have you tested positive for COVID-19 on a sample collected between 14 and 90 days before the scheduled departure of your flight into Canada? Say, no, I did not test positive. Then it says, do you have proof of a negative molecular test uh, on a sample taken no more than 72 hours before your scheduled departure of your flight into Canada? And I say, yep, I've got that proof. In actual in actuality, I don't because I have not taken uh, that test, but 
in this case, you would need to maintain that proof of test. One thing to note that that test must be in either English or French, or it must be a notarized a translation into either French or English. It asks, which country did you receive your negative molecular test in? And I'm going to say United States of America. Go forward. And then it asks, as a traveler coming into Canada, you need to declare all the countries you have visited 14 days prior to your entry. Um, and if you need to know what is considered visiting a country, you can click on that and I'll give you a description. It just means um, that you left the airport station or the vehicle as opposed to connecting or transferring through. Then you would say, no, it's a direct flight. So we're done with the basic information. Now we have to complete our quarantine plan questionnaire. Do you have accommodation where you can quarantine for 14 days or possibly longer? So again, it goes through what quarantine means. I'm going to say, yes, I do have a place, and that's at my family's residence. Uh, can you avoid all contact with other people in the household with whom you do not travel and have no guests? And say, yep, I can do all that. Uh, will you have access to the necessities of life, including water, food, medica medication, and heat without leaving quarantine? They want to make sure that you're safe. And say yes. Are there at-risk people in the location where you plan to quarantine? And we say, no, nobody's over the age of 65 um, or have, none of them have underlying medical conditions. None of them have a compromised immune system. And we say, no, there's nobody at risk where I'm going to be quarantined. Is there a person at the location where you plan to quarantine who works or assists in a facility, home, or workplace that includes at-risk populations. Is your place of quarantine a group living environment, or does it currently house different families? I can read through that to make sure that it doesn't apply to you. But I'm going to say no. And you need, you need to put in your full address, um, and you need to enter in what type of destination it is. I'm going to say I'm staying with friends or family, not returning home. So I'm going to add in a fake address. Let's say 777 West uh, 7th Avenue, Vancouver. And it found that address automatically populated it for me and I check to make sure that it's correct by the way this is not my real address it is just random address that I put in and go forward and this is the last step I need to complete the COVID-19 self-assessment are you or any of the travelers listed in this form experiencing any of the following symptoms fever or cough or fever and difficult breathing and say no. And that's it. Uh, when you hit the submit button, you acknowledge that everything you've entered in here is correct. It is an offense if you do lie, so be careful that you do tell the truth. I'm going to hit submit here, uh, and then we'll delete it later on. And it's... And I'm now given my arrive can receipt. Now, one thing that it does not show or wasn't able to show on this was me scanning my passport because I've already scanned my passport once through the, the arrive can app in the past. It remembers that and keeps that file. 
So you only have to upload your passport the one time. So there you go. When you arrive at the border, you will be asked to show your arrive can e-receipt. All you need to do, we'll just close out of this, click on your arrive can app and the trip summary and e arrive can e-receipt option is there and you click on it and that receipt shows up with the ticket and when I'm supposed to arrive. But again, this is fake and I will delete it, but this gives you a good idea on what to expect when you complete your ARRIVE CAN information.